It's the new trend, John. The uh, the starters, they're not even getting into these first games that much anymore. Do you anticipate seeing uh, a lot of the Eagles starters save for the quarterback situation? Well, Doug said he's going to play everybody who's healthy. Uh, we'll see if, if it works out that way. I doubt it, uh, especially some of the real star players. Uh, you know, if, if he does, it'll be, as you mentioned, for a series or two uh, and nothing more than that. Uh, he's mentioned that number 65 to 70 as total snaps to get done throughout the preseason uh, for the starters. Uh, and I imagine they'll eventually get there, most of them obviously coming in week three. But, yeah, you're not going to be seeing – certainly not – it's not going to be fun in seeing Eagles, Steelers, Carson Wentz versus Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, and uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what the six uh, the Sixers, the Eagles' uh, situation at quarterback will be tonight. How do you anticipate that time being divvied up? Summer of Nate Sudfeld. Uh, I, I expect it Summer. to be a half and a half. Uh, but uh, we'll see. Nate will start, obviously. Uh, and there's no real need uh, to sort of protect him as a third-string quarterback. I think, it, in fact, I think it's more valuable for him the more reps he gets. Uh, so I think he should play to the half, and then Joe Callahan uh, would take over from there. Uh, ultimately, that seems to make the most sense uh, for week one. Uh, and because the Eagles, remember, I often say this is about more than just 2018. People get very myopic. It's about... 2019 as well and remember 2019 Nick Foles probably isn't going to be here so you have to get Nate Sudfeld ramped up to be a a backup quarterback in this league and and getting reps in the preseason is an important part of that. John you write on our website 97.3ESPN.com Summer Sudfeld of course that's been our go-to phrase but the fact that the last time Sudfeld was on the field it was that dink and dunk fest you write about and it's time to take the shrimp crack off do you think that he can throw that deep ball and will we see some of that tonight well I'd like to see it I I mean Nate's a this big six foot six guy Uh, you want to see him air it out occasionally Uh, if you remember that game he did play, his completion percentage was, was tremendous, but there wasn't a lot of splash plays because the Eagles kept it very, very simple. Uh, and, and, again, you're not really – it's not paramount to win this football game. I, I mean, it's not – that part of it's not a concern. Uh, so there's no real use to uh, just have him check it down, check it down, check it down. But part of that is the quarterback as well. I, I mean – Every play is designed with a number of options. And, hey, maybe at times he was supposed to throw it down the field and felt more comfortable uh, coming off that read and checking it down. These, these are the types of things you want to see improvement from and see if he can do. Well, I know um, we talked about this in the offseason. You know, I didn't think that Wentz's health was the big question about trading foals. It was how comfortable do they feel with Nate Sudfeld? you know, to let Foles walk or trade him away. And I guess these preseason games will certainly, uh, you know, could have some insight into how comfortable they feel with Nate Sudfeld, whether they want to talk about moving Foles in the season if they have to. Yeah, I I mean, in in the building, they like Nate Sudfeld. I I don't think that's a question. I think the rest of us kind of want to see why. Why is there so much uh, excitement over Nate Sudfeld? Why does... Doug Peterson and Mike Rowe and Press Taylor, why do they like him so much? Uh, Remember, I I, I said earlier this week on the show, Indianapolis tried to sign him away last year. The Eagles promoted him. They promoted him for a reason to keep him because they wanted him in the organization. That part of it we know. They like him. And ultimately they think he's going to be the backup quarterback because they understand that, that Nick Foles, it's just not tenable to keep them from a financial standpoint moving forward, especially when you got to talk extension with Carson Wentz. Uh, so that's just the reality of the salary cap and the reality of this league. Uh, and they believe he's going to be that backup quarterback. But we have to see something. I, you can say you like somebody and you like somebody, but they got to prove it on the field. Yeah, and uh, then obviously Callahan's uh, going to get some playing time. Would you anticipate that Joe will get – 
the entire second half or maybe even earlier uh, than that? Yeah, I, I would think he would get the entire second half. I, Do they have I, another I guy like other than the, than they have a fifth guy? No. Uh, it'll be those two guys, uh, and that's it. Um, and and that's plenty, obviously. I, I mean, that's why Joe's here, and Joe's mainly got to use this as, as an audition tape for other teams. Uh, that's, that's his reality. Barring an injury, uh, he's not going to be on this football team. But what he does have the ability to do is, is show other teams that he's valuable, and he's an NFL quarterback, uh, and, and it's his attempt to get signed elsewhere. So it's very important for him. And that's a guy who's had tremendous internships, if you think about it, uh, for Aaron Rodgers for a couple seasons, and now he's with Carson Wentz and Dick Foles. So uh, he's learning a lot. And, and this is what I'll say about Joe. He's a heck of a lot better than Matt McGloin was <laughs> last year as that extra quarterback. And really, at the time, remember, Nate Sudfeld wasn't here. He was still in Washington. So it, it was it was the third-string quarterback. So that's how deep the Eagles are. I mean, Joe, Joe has proven he can make plays. I, I think the issues with him are the reality that he's undersized. He, he's If you look at every other quarterback on this team, it's 6'5", 6'6", 6'6". And, and Joe's just a small guy, and it, that makes it more difficult because it's tough to see over the offensive line. It's tough to see throwing lanes. And then think about the Eagles' offensive line. Uh, obviously, he's on the third team normally, so he doesn't get to play with the Barrett Brookses of the world. But even that, you talk about interior offensive linemen, they got a rookie, Matt Pryor, who's six foot seven. So that could make it difficult at times for Joe Callahan. John McMullen with us on the Board of Alconda Hotline as we preview Eagles Steelers. He's got an article up on our website, Five Things to Watch. And, you know, we were talking about Nate Sudfeld throwing the deep ball. John can't throw it if the center snaps the ball awry or if the snap goes wrong. And that's one of your keys to watch tonight. They've been trying to throw Isaac Sayamalo in there. And how do you think he's looked so far? Well, every day, like clockwork, he's got one bad snap. And it's uh, a shotgun snap. And uh, Doug Peterson has talked about a little bit, Mike Rowe. Uh, it generally is in running plays when he's trying to get it back quickly, too quickly, and trying to get to his assignment. Uh, and it's something he's obviously got to work on. The Eagles have always believed that center is his best position. They've moved them there. Uh they list him as the backup center, although in reality he's not because if something were to happen uh, to Jason Kelsey, they would move Stefan Wisniewski over and he would be the center. So I look around the, this league. Uh, the Cardinals lost A.Q. Shipley uh, for the season. Uh, the Vikings just lost, lost Nick Easton, their left guard for the season. I, I think it's August now. History says Howie Roseman makes about two trades on average in August. I, I think that's one of the most likely names that could be on the trading block. I was just going to follow up with that, John, because I saw you kind of reference that uh, with John Filippo in uh, Minnesota. They just lost a lineman that uh, there could be a connection there. Yeah, and, and it could go either way. I mean, the reality is, I mean, I talked to John a lot last year, but never, obviously, he was the quarterback's coach, so I never talked to him about specific offensive linemen. I, I mean, he has an up-close view. He knows Isaac, who obviously started last season as the starting left guard and got benched. I mean, it could go either way. He could say he, he's a good reclamation project, let's bring him in. Or he could say, you know what, he wasn't very good. <laughs> Let's go in another right, direction. Right. So, well, they thought enough of him last year to sense. start him from the get-go. I mean, you know, when many people, yourself included, I believe, thought that he was not clearly the best left guard, they still went with him and, you know, went with him for a couple of games, and then they went to Warmack before they finally got to Wisniewski. Yeah, and that's one of those things. I mean, he was a third-round pick. And when you're talking about a premium pick, and that's how NFL people describe first, second, third-round picks, they want him to succeed. 
and, and they give him the benefit of the doubt. And I think that's a lot to what happened because he wasn't uh, the best left guard. And it ultimately proved that Wiz was. Now, Wiz, it, it, there are some issues with him because he's so versatile and he can play every position on the interior. So he kind of gets pigeonholed because he's a, he's a great center. Uh, you saw him hold up at left guard. He can play right guard. And you're, you're, you're not going to see a downgrade at any of those positions when you insert him there. Uh, and that's valuable. And that's what people look for in backup offensive linemen. So the Eagles wanted Wiz to be that interior backup. But the reality is, and they finally came around to thinking, well, he's clearly the best guy. So you got to get the best five people on the field. That's how it ended up. Isaac, as I said, originally got the benefit of the doubt because he had the pedigree and he was a third-round pick. Clearly, he was not ready to start. Uh, and in a lot of ways, I think he needs a change of scenery. I think a trade would be good for him uh, because sometimes that happens with pro athletes. We see it all the time. He's got talent, uh, but he's a little down on himself in this situation. And when you look around, by the way, and you see Jason Peters has the locker to your right and Brandon Brooks and, and Dwayne Johnson are your to your left and you're struggling with those guys, that's – that that can play that can play mind games with you. John McMullen with us talking Eagles is the Eagles and Steelers preseason game number one is tonight at Lincoln Financial Field. You can hear it right here on ninety seven three ESPN. You know, if we're on the old line, John, I guess I should bring up Jordan Mylotta. We get, finally we'll get to see him in game action, right? This is the uh, this is the project, right? Yeah, he is a project, and I, I think it's going to be cross your fingers. You know, he's so athletic, but He's so raw, and it, it could go one of two ways. I mean, he's so big and so powerful. Maybe you try to run the football, give him some confidence that way, let him sort of power off. Uh, on the other hand, if you're trying to throw the football, he, he's not used to NFL pass protection. Uh, that's pretty obvious, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how he holds up. Uh Ultimately, I think he's earmarked for the practice squad. I do think the Eagles want to undertake, which this should be a, a couple-year process. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be quick. Uh, and I think they will try to keep him around on the practice squad. But uh, he's certainly not ready to play right now. And you just kind of cross your fingers and hope that he, he can have a, at least a serviceable attempt at getting out there for the first time. You talked about how tall Matt Pryor was. Who's more imposing, uh, Mylotta or Matt Pryor? Oh, well, no question. Mylotta, I, I say it all the time. Mylotta, if he flames out in football, can go call Vince McMahon and, and be, <laughs> you know, the next Andre the Giant. Uh, it, it's, uh, I mean, he's just ridiculously sized. Imposing. To the point where... Yeah, I, I mean, Matt Pryor is 6'7", 330, and, and he looks tiny next to my ladder. I, I mean, the guy's size is just unbelievable. We're talking Eagle Steelers with John McMullen. So while we're on the offense, John, I know another name that people are really looking forward to seeing him in game action is the guy that they uh, Eagles fans feel they stole from the Cowboys. That's Dallas Goddard, right? Cowboys wanted a tight end to replace Jason Witten. Well, too bad he ended up in South Philly. Yeah. How do you think? I'm uh, looking forward to seeing yeah, him in action tonight, man. Because his YouTube highlights look great. How's he looked in person? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's been great in practice, especially in the red zone. He's taught so many touchdown passes in practice. It's almost ridiculous. So I think he's up to six or seven uh, that I've personally observed. Uh, he's just a really good receiver, and the Eagles did steal him from the Cowboys. So that was uh, something Howie Roseman, uh, sort of a double tweak by by trading back up and stealing him uh, from the Cowboys. It, it, it's You know, the biggest issue is obviously who's in front of him, and that's Zach Ertz, who's a Pro Bowl tight end, and uh, he's a star player. And it, it, it comes down to how much 12 personnel, two tight ends, do you want to play? Uh, but in the preseason, look, he should get plenty of time. Zach's not going to play very much, so you're going to be able to see uh, Dallas Goddard. I, and I would imagine when they do get it in the red zone, that's going to be, the, if not the first guy, 
uh, Nate Sutfeld's looking at. It's it's going to be very very quick uh, as he looks over his options on particular passing plays because he's just a huge target and he's got a big catching radius and he's got great hands. So I mean, there's a lot of big guys who are huge targets, but they don't have great hands. He's yeah. got he's got tremendous hands. Hey, uh, obviously uh, another area we're all going to be watching tonight. I know I will be is Sidney Jones and uh, what his role might be. I, I don't think this is going to give us any answers, but, you know, whether they start him in the nickel or if he gets some time outside, but do you think Sidney Jones will get a little bit more time just to get him some more game action because he missed a full year? Yeah, that's possible because I think you'll see him both. I, I think you'll see him inside to start in, in the slot, and I think you'll also see him some at left corner uh, because he's been rotating at both positions. Uh, with Devonte Balls be day to day, when he's not in the slot, he plays left corner uh, on the second team. So I, I think the Eagles want to look at both of those players at both of those positions. Uh, so they're likely to see a little bit more time, uh, but you do have to put the injury uh, equation into it and the talent. Uh, they could go the same direction as a typical starter, simply because of his history. I don't expect it. I don't think it's deserved yet. I think he still needs uh, reps to get better. Uh, but there is so much talent there. You could see the Eagles uh, erring on the side of caution. I, I don't think they should, but it's certainly a possibility. And then there's, of course, uh, guys like Michael Bennett, uh, who was brought over here that people are kind of interested in. Do you anticipate some of the veteran players like Bennett uh, and, and Chris Long and Haloti not to, to see any action tonight? Well, I don't expect a lot if they do. I mean, there's certain guys who have to play because you got to play a football game. Uh, but anybody of any value, uh, if you're going to see him at all, it's going to be a quick cameo. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this is a game for the younger players in the deep reserves. And on the defensive line, it's it's going to be Stephen Means and, and Josh Schwett. Uh, and Joe Osai that people don't talk about. They're going to fall in love with him because he's one of those high motor guys that never stops. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, anybody of note, if you do see him, it's going to be a quick cameo. Yeah. So turn it on quickly. John, yeah. you're hitting. Well, get to the game on early. <laughs> Seven, three, ESPN. Yes. You're hitting some of those names I was going to ask you about because as I, I have the depth chart in front of me, and I wasn't here the other day when it first came out. Were there any – surprises on the defensive side of that depth chart. And specifically, you know, when you mention the front four and you really look at their front eight, I mean, they're so deep in that area. You look through the guys that are listed at the starters, uh, maybe 10 out of the 11, you have an idea what you can expect from those positions outside of maybe Nate Gary. Uh, were there any names uh, on the depth chart that were higher than you or that kind of caught you by surprise? No, I, I mean, Nate would be number one because he's sort of taken the lead at weak side linebacker uh, over. I, I think we all assumed that Corey Nelson would be getting that job, uh, but Nate has come on, and so has Camus Grusel as well. Uh, and, and right now, Nate's in the lead. We talked about the nickelback slot a lot. Uh, what I was most surprised about was how deep Janelle Pumphrey was on the depth chart. Mm -hmm. I uh, just talked about pedigree and draft picks. Janelle was a fourth-round pick, so it's not a premium pick. But if you remember, the Eagles traded up to get him. Uh, they were very high on him last year. They wanted want him to succeed. So I'm not sure if that's evidence of sort of him falling off and he's not going to make this team or they want to sort of, of light a fire under him and make sure he keeps pressing uh, because he is kind of a laid-back guy. And it's one of those situations where you might have to motivate him. Uh, and we'll see. I mean, I, I think the preseason, if you ask me one player who it's most important for, it's Danelle Pumphrey because he's got to prove he, he, he can be physical enough to play in this league. Mm. Last year in the preseason, he proved the exact opposite. Right. He was great in, in – in a T-shirt and shorts, uh, and when they put the pads on, he simply couldn't play. 
So he's got to prove the exact opposite this year. Well, since you brought him up then, John, uh, how do you read that depth chart with him? Because Ajayi, Sproles, Clement, that'd be like one, two, three, right? You put small, Smallwood then as four, or does it go, le- I mean, I'm looking at it in front of me. Does it go Ajayi, Sproles, well, I think Clement? I Matt Jones, Jones. four. I yeah. don't have it in front of me. Right. So but I, I know Deuce. I, I know Deuce Staley likes Matt Jones a lot. He's told me that specifically. He thinks he has feature back potential. This is another example where I talk about 2019 as well. Uh, if you remember, Darren Sproles is going to retire. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jay Ajahi, it, this is the final year of his contract. If he has a big year, do the Eagles really want to pay big money to a running back with degenerative knees? I'm not sure. So if you start thinking about 2019 and saying, well, who's going to be the feature back? Maybe it's Matt Jones if he proves he can hold on to the football. Deuce likes him a lot. I thought that would help Danell Pumphrey as well as the potential replacement for Darren Sproles. If you want a feather in Wendell Smallwood's cap, is that he's on a lot of Mm first-team special teams units. And if Dave Sipp is there pounding the table and saying, look, 46 to 53 on the roster, if you're going to be in that position, you got to help on special teams. Wendell's the best special teams player. So everybody's got a case to make, and and that's why the preseason's big for all those guys. Yeah, I do have it in front of me. So if I'm doing it, reading it the same way that you are, then Smallwood is ahead of Pumphrey, too. Seven guys on the chart and Pumphrey six out of seven. That's why you're saying Donnell Pumphrey is the guy that maybe needs to make the biggest impression in the preseason. That makes Josh Adams the only guy listed behind him if I'm reading it the same way that you are, John. Yeah, that's the way it is. And uh, right now, it, it, it as I said, that was the biggest surprise to me, and especially because Matt, Matt Jones has missed a number of practices uh, with a lower body injury. Uh, so he hasn't even been around for a lot of the practices, uh, and he's still listed ahead. Uh, so, again, it could go one of two ways. They could be trying to motivate Danell, or he just could be, you know, buried on the death chart. <laughs> Uh, and I think the preseason is going to be very, very big for them. Mm. We'll see it all unfold tonight. You can listen to the game right here on 97.3 ESPN as the Eagles are back, and we anticipate that uh, you will not see a whole heck of a lot of the starters, but some interesting names to keep, keep an eye on, as John just pointed out, and uh, you can hear that game. Cover starts at 6 tonight on 97.3 ESPN. Looks like, John, you are already there. We have any early August preseason tailgaters. Yeah, you know this town. Uh, there are a few uh, night games, so that gives them an opportunity. I think they opened the parking lot at one, so I assume the first one was here at one o two. All right, well, have a beer for us. <laughs> John McMullen, like all guests, appeared via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Thank you, Johnny Mac. All right, thanks, guys.